All right. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Josh Duke. I'm the Assistant Director of Communications and Recru Recruitment here at the College of Education. Uh, I just want to thank you all for coming to our first session of the week for our College of Education preview event. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, this event is a kind of open house for our graduate programs where you can meet people, uh, in this case, a lot of our wonderful faculty members and staff members, get to know our programs, have an opportunity to ask some questions. Uh, so I just wanted to briefly go over a little bit about how the format of tonight's going to work. Um, feel free throughout the evening to leave questions in the chat. Uh, we'll be doing a, a Q&A uh, in breakout rooms uh, afterwards. So if you have any specific questions, we're going to be breaking it up based on admissions uh, and some of our other programs. Um, and then uh, we're going to be doing a short presentation before that where it goes over the uh, overview of educational leadership and policy studies, uh, which is the department that you are uh, talking with right now. Um, but before we get to all that, I just wanted to give a brief uh, high level overview of FSU as a whole. Uh, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, uh, FSU has been steadily climbing the ranks nationally uh, for quite some time now. Uh, I think we're number 19 overall among public universities, uh, which is very exciting. Um, more specifically to the College of Education, uh, the FSU College of Education is actually the oldest college of education in the state of Florida. Uh, and we just so happen to give out more scholarships than anyone else in the state of Florida as well. Uh, so that's always good to know, right? Um, but I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to uh, Toby Park. Uh, he is the Chair for Educational Leadership, and we'll go ahead and get started with our presentation. Going to go Thanks, ahead and share Josh. my screen. Thanks, Josh, so much. So as Josh mentioned, I'm Toby Pargagan. I'm the Chair of Educational Leadership and Policy Studies. We're thrilled that you're here. We're going to go through a brief overview of many of our different programs. But before we get started, what I thought we would do is, to the extent that you are able, uh, if you would like to, as a, to introduce yourself as a prospective student. So in no particular order, we'll just give a few minutes. If you'd like to unmute and tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you think you might want to study with us. You're also welcome to type in chat too, if you don't feel Here's like all. unmuting. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go first if nobody else is going to go. Uh, my name is Jared Pogey. I'm the Building Code Coordinator at Florida A&M University in the Department of Environmental Health and Safety. Uh, I did my master's in public administration at Florida State University in the Askew School of Public Administration. Um, I'm applying to the Educational uh, Leadership PhD program, and uh, I look forward to um, meeting other people in the program and e expanding my knowledge and my uh, educational career. Great. Anyone else, either via voice or via chat, is perfectly fine too. So maybe what we'll do is go ahead and get started. If you'd like to introduce yourself via the chat, please feel free to do that. Um, I'll go ahead and get started by previewing our land acknowledgement statement here at the college, or within the department rather. I won't read it verbatim, but you can definitely take the time to look into it as well. Basically, what we're trying to communicate here is that important to the department is an issue and a focus on social justice. And we understand where Florida State University came to be, where it is now, and the voices and bodies that were part of that past. Our mission statement is something that we've developed over time here. Again, I won't read this out loud to you, but the mission is really to focus on how can we meet educators where they are? How can we improve partnerships? How can we prepare scholars and leaders to commit critical inquiry? And how can we use critical evidence to create environments focused on excellence and social change? So we can probably go ahead two slides at this point. So our, some of the things we're working on in the department right now is to increase the overall academic quality and reputation of the department. Uh, we've done this for a variety of different ways. We also are deeply engaged in partnerships and community engagement. We deeply value diversity and social justice. And we're focusing really on realizing the full potential of diversity and inclusion across the university. To give you a little bit of idea of kind of who our students are, 
about 53% of the students identify as white. You can see the other breakdown there as well. Many of our students come from the state of Florida, but we actually have students from all across the country and really all across the world. One of my recent doctoral students is actually based in South Korea. So to give you an overview of kind of how we're structured and what we're gonna talk about tonight, we have the Educational Leadership and Policy Program that is directed, uh, that actually is split into two in terms of Educational Leadership Administration and then Ed Policy and Evaluation. We have the Foundations of Education Program, which has majors in history and philosophy education, as well as international multicultural education. And then we have our higher education program. So what we'll do now is I will turn things over to our individual program coordinators. I'll have them introduce themselves as their slides come up and then give you an overview of their individual programs. So first up is actually Dr. Kevin Forehand, who is not Dr. Crystal Small, but worked very closely with him. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming this afternoon. Like uh, Dr. Hart Gagan said, I am not Dr. Christopher Small. Dr. Christopher Small is the Director of Educational Leadership and Administration, and I am a member of the teaching faculty here. And so today i like to just give you an overview of some of the highlights of educational leadership and administration um, here at Florida State University. Just a few features of the program. Um, first and foremost, our program is a Department of Education aligned program and students who matriculate through that program have the intention on graduating with their Florida principal leadership and that's a level one certificate that means that they are prepared to serve in administrative capacities as assistant principals deans and so forth they are ready to take on leadership roles another part of that program is the Florida Educational Leadership Exam, which is a part of that certification process. And our students graduate uh, after successfully completing that exam. The program here offers the master's specialist and certificate program. It is fully online um, and it is a two year cohort model, which means that everybody who comes in in that, in that particular semester would be advised and they would take the same courses at the same time over a two-year period. As far as curriculum and instruction goes, one of the highlights of the program is not that it's just an online program which provides flexibility, but we get practical and in-field hours so that our students are uh, not just uh, have the knowledge base, but they also have the hands-on experiences that allow them to be successful once they enter into that particular workforce. And so we have 165 hours of field experience. In addition to that, we have 80 hours of internship experiences. And, and you are working with very talented partners of ours in schools and districts um, with our staff. And so that's done so that you are not just academically sound, but you are also prepared to be in the field. Uh, we also have course mentors who are normally graduate assistants who also provide individual supports as well as uh, teacher leaders and other high quality faculty within the department. So one of the, the biggest celebrations we've had over the past year is that this program is ranked number three in the nation by US News and World Reports for an online graduate education program. We're really, really proud of that. The program has had very positive reviews based on our own students' um, exit surveys. We have extremely high, uh, I talked about the FEELI, which is the Florida Educational Leadership Exam. We have very high passing rates, and that is certainly to the testament of both students and faculty. Um, but these pass rates are presented on the screen here, are broken down into the subtest categories. There are three subtests. And we are, as you can see, very, very high above the state average rates at subtest one at 88%, subtest two at 89%, and subtest three at 84%. And so, um, the the work that's gone into 
preparation for the exam certainly showcases itself uh, on the on the on the on the exit end. If you do not pass the exam, of course, we have remediation um, opportunities. So where do our students come from by location? Um, this is a state kind of graphical representation. You can see that um, they come from all over the state. There's, there's about the majority kind of between the Eastern Panhandle and Central Florida. But again, they are all over the state. Um, there are 90 students currently. 30 of them are specialist students, 59 of them are master students, and there's one person attempting the modified certificate program. And as far as cohorts go, uh, from the summer and fall, there are 32 students, 13 specialists, and 19 master students. So what is this program? How is it comprised and what does it take to graduate? There's a face-to-face -face orientation, um, and that will be happening soon. And in the past, we've done them virtually, so there may be some, you know, accommodation for people who aren't able to do that. But the the hope is that they will return to face to face. It takes uh, 33 hours to get either the master's or the specialist degree, and you take two courses per semester, which you will finish in two years. The modified certificate program is only 27 hours because that is a certain that is a program for students who don't want the degree but want the coursework that's necessary to qualify for the certification. As far as what it takes to actually graduate, of course, you have to um, go through all of the coursework. And within that, within those courses, we have what we call signature assessments. And every signature assessment is required to both pass the course and to meet the graduation requirement. You have to pass all of the subtests, which I just mentioned before, of the Florida Educational Leadership Exam. You complete the 80 hours of, of internship, the 165 hours of field experience. And if you need the ESAR requirement, this is for instruction for English, for students who have English as a second language, then that would be embedded into one of the courses as well. So what are the types of, what are the names and types of courses that are offered? They are listed here. Again, there are core courses that are in a cohort, mo in a cohort model. So those two courses that you will have each semester are, are outlined here. And then in the summer, uh, we've kind of made it so that the summer courses are designed to have the electives. There's a difference between the specialists and the masters. The specialist students will also take the policy course because there's an emphasis on policy in the specialist program. And so we've made it so that it is always kind of in that cycle of two courses per semester and electives in the summer. So what is the admission, admissions process to this program? The applications for the summer are always due on March 1st, and for the fall, they're always due on June 1st. As far as what is included in the uh, application for admission, and for admissions is two years of reaching te recent teaching experience, gracious, and that is supported by final evaluations. So we want you to have some experience so that you can bring some context to the uh, coursework. You will have to write a statement of purpose that's about your career goals and interest in educational leadership and the FSU program. What are your goals? What do you want to do? How does FSU or how can FSU help, um, help you meet those goals? And then you write a one-page statement describing and analyzing a dilemma related to educational leadership. You write, you discuss a problem and perhaps what you've done to, to, to deal with that problem. You also include your resume, your official transcripts, two letters of recommendations, 
one from a direct supervisor, and of course, a professional reference. And da, 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 GRE scores are currently waived through the fall of 2026. And that's been a great help to the admissions process. So if you're trying to decide which program or which track is suitable for you, of course, if you are attempting the master's program, then you have earned a bachelor's of science or bachelor's of arts degree. You can use financial aid and it's 33 hours. If you are um, attempting the specialist program, then of course you have to have already earned a master's degree. And it is also financial aid and scholarship eligible. The modified certificate program, while it requires that you have a master's degree, it does not um, meet the eligibility for financial aid. So that is definitely something to consider before selecting that track. Again, all of the programs, all the tracks lead to level one educational leadership certificates in the state of Florida. So for questions and com and questions and contacts, I think Ms. Deb Ham Kelly is on the Zoom call. She can wave and introduce herself. You'll probably talk with her a little bit later. Dr. Christopher Small, again, is the Director of Educational Leadership and Administration. And I am also here to assist, as is all of the other faculty, esteemed faculty in our department. Thank you so much. So Cameron Beatty actually could not be with us this evening, but I can give you a very brief overview of higher education. Uh, to start, the uh, program is based upon the NASP and ACPA core competencies in leadership, social justice, and student affairs. We are currently the 13th nationally ranked program in higher education, and we offer assistantships with stipends. So students are able to come to the university, work on some area of student affairs, and then complete their master's degree or potentially PhD in a cohort model. The changes to the master's degree more recently, we've actually reduced the number of credit hours. So now it's a matter of completing the coursework with 36 hours. Uh, Full-time students complete in two years, part-time students complete in three years. And to give you an idea, we have 15 new master's students who started this fall, and we have 12 new PhD students who are all fascinating individuals that I've gotten to meet. The way the Master of Science program works is that in year one, you focus on foundation and pillars. In year two, you go in insights into practice and you complete an internship and a capstone to kind of round out the overall program that's based in actual educational settings here at the university. In terms of the PhD, it's 57 hours of coursework as laid out here, as well as dissertation research. You're gonna hear a little bit later on from Dr. Adarola some of the coursework that we offer here at the university. The PhD in higher education is full-time in four years and part-time in five to six years. The PhD in higher education, some of the course examples, we have a pro seminar, which is intro to PhD studies for all of our PhD students here in the department. We have a history of education course, a public policy and higher education course. And really kind of what makes us different is that we have methodological flexibility. You can choose to use qualitative, quantitative, or mixed methods. Our scholarly engagement around conferences and trainings, which we provide travel and support for, as well as our topical concentrations. You can see here just very briefly a look at the bright smiling faces of the higher education faculty here at the university. Dr. Beatty is in the red jacket there towards the center. The application deadline actually has moved. It is advertised originally as December 1st. We have moved that until January 15th. So if you are interested in an assistantship or a scholarship, you need to apply by December 1st, but you actually have until January 15th to apply to the program overall. And that's already been updated on our website and so forth. There's a few other events coming up in terms of higher education, in terms of uh, recruitment and careers are concerned. You can find more information about this and I'm sure we can provide it to you via email afterwards. And the last thing I'll mention is that the higher education program has done a lot of great work in recent years in terms of funding, in terms of scholarships, in terms of recognition of our students, um, and in terms of students who have received McKnight dissertation scholarships. The contact information for the higher education program, Dr. Cameron Beatty is more than happy to speak with you. Also, the website is listed here as well. The FSU HESA is our student organization, which can provide us more information there as well. 
So thank you. And I'm sure Dr. Beatty would be more than happy to talk with you if you have additional questions. Hi, I'm glad to have you here. I'm Patrice Ayatirola. I'm a program co coordinator for our educational leadership and policy program. And specifically today, I'll be talking about our ed policy and evaluation and, and a couple other majors, which we'll We'll talk about it as we go through the slides briefly, but our education policy and evaluation major is a graduate program that trains you to primarily analyze and evaluate federal, state, and local policies. But given that we're also in the state capital, um, we also provide some training around developing and then ultimately potentially implementing state policies. And there's a wide range of topics here, probably the most, the most, um, important one of our time right now is the effects of COVID, um, but that's not the only one that our faculty and our students are interested in. These are just a small sampling of the topics. Next, we also have major in history and philosophy of education. And just to take one step back, I'm gonna be talking about our face-to-face -face masters and PhD programs in these majors. So our history and philosophy of education program really is around looking at education, problems in education from our disciplinary perspectives, primarily history and philosophy, but also we draw upon our our, our strong fa faculty as well in anthropology and sociology in the broader university. Um, and that major students and faculty are interested in both domestic and international education. Our international and multicultural education major clearly is um, in the realm of international education, but also multicultural and multicultural, in both in terms of international and domestic con context. And it's one of our top programs in the country in comparative inter international development education. Um, and basically we're contributing to the discussions, to the policies and actually the practices that happen in international education primarily. So for our two, for our two degrees that we offer, our master's and our PhD, so a master's in both of the programs, there's some course differences there, but basically they're structured the same across the majors. It's a 36 hour credit, pro, 36 credit hour program, six in the two courses basically affect in the major core areas. And then all of our um, majors, we, and including in our doctoral program, which I'll talk about in a second, is where we place great emphasis on disciplinary perspectives. How do we see the world? How do we see problems? How do we see policies, et cetera, from len different lenses, economics, philosophy, history, sociology, anthropology, and we value that because it gives us different lenses on which we can examine issues in education. We also want to, both at the master's and at the PhD level, if you could take a step back, um, emphasize research and evaluation skills. Um, because you wanna go out, especially coming out of a master's program, you wanna go out with tangible skills that you can use and market yourself in the workplace. And then there's room to specialize through our electives. So the, the length of the program for a master's student is anywhere from three to six semester hours of full-time study. Um, and there's limited funding available, although we have really great flexibility around in-state residency. And there's also, if you're an undergrad at FSU and if you have a um, Bright Future Scholarship, I believe that you can use your fourth year if you've already completed your, your bachelor's to help fund your initial year in the master's program. On our PhD side, it's a 64 credit hour program and plus 24 dissertation hours. And principally in many of the same ways follows, basically there are core courses. The core courses are in policy. There were, we emphasize disciplinary perspectives as well and greater, much greater depth in terms of the research courses that you would take. We do, the length of the program is between four to six years studying full time. And we do try to fund our, our PhD students through fellowships, scholarships, and assistantships. In terms of admissions at the master's level, it's a minimum of 3.0 um, 
undergraduate GPA, and if you have a graduate degree or coursework, 3.5 in, in the graduate coursework. Right now, the GRE is, is waived, um, and we'd like you to provide a, a resume, a statement of purpose. It's a short statement of purpose, and three letters of rec recommendation. Two of those recommendations must be academic recommendations, and we also recognize that you might be doing internships or even working while studying um, or have stopped out and, and after your undergraduate degree and have worked. So we value that experience as well. And so feel free to have a reference from that. You supply transcripts and we have final application deadlines, but we tend to review the applications throughout the, the term. We kind of do our emissions on a rolling basis, but the final application deadline for summer is February 1st for fall of 2023 is June 1st. Again, similar requirements for PhD. Um, there are waivers that are available on waivers to the GRE that are available based on, I believe it's experience in the field. And we want to resume in the statement of purpose that um, should clearly really are, be able to articulate your research interest as nascent as they may be, and folks who you're interested in working with, et cetera, and the letters of recommendation um, are the same and all must be on letterhead. Transcripts, we have a single point, a single deadline, and it's December 1st for fall of 2023. In terms of career opportunities, it really is going to vary. At the master's level, there are a number of opportunities within state government, within um, school districts as evaluators, et cetera, and also in, in different policy organizations, again, um, domestically and internationally. We're preparing you to be analysts, to be able to use the, the research tools and analytic tools that we train you in um, to be able to support, you know, nonprofit organizations, think tanks, um, education departments, et cetera. At the doctoral level, at the PhD program, we are really preparing you to be researchers, whether that ultimately then sets you up to be a faculty member in a tenure track position where your role is to do research, to teach, and to also provide service to the organization and the, and the broader scholarly community, or is it or to work for a research or research organization. Now, not everyone who leaves a PhD program and does research, but that's what we're preparing you to do um, so that you can have a better sense and understanding of kind of what you're taking on coming into a PhD program. I'll also just segue because I'm also the coordinator for our graduate certificate and program evaluation, which is valuable to both masters and, and, and doctoral students, both in our PhD and in our um, online EDD programs. And basically a graduate certificate is a certificate that, um, if we can click, I'm not sure how well we have to just click through everything on this slide would be good. So effectively a certificate is a credential. It's a signal to folks that you have a certain a requisite set of skills, um, and in particular in evaluating programs, okay? And there are online and in-person options for this certificate, and you could do it along with your master's, doctoral, or EBD degrees. And there are four required courses, intro to program evaluation, and evaluation new educational programs. It's an advanced, um, course, and I'm very excited that we're going to be basically incorporating a practicum in that course and into the basic statistics and qualitative research methods and an elective that you can um, select among, but something that adds to the your research and evaluation skills. So again, there are a number of positions that you would be qualified for and that you would be attractive for. And it's not 58,000 to 8,000, it's 58,000 to 80,000 in terms of sell, potential salary. But a lot of organizations, including school districts and other educational organizations, both internationally and domestic, 
um, there's such a great emphasis now on evaluation and to be able to have the certificate and the requisite skills to do program evaluations is really something that is highly valued in a broader educational market right now. The admissions to the program is pretty straightforward. You completed an admissions, a certificate of admissions form. Um, you could do that while you're in, enrolled in a degree seeking program, or if you're not enrolled in a program, you could still um, apply to the, to the university um, to take courses and they will allow you to take courses. Your admissions is, is effectively not binding, it's just a plan, but there is a formal process that you submit the um, application form we review it, make sure that your plan looks good, and you have up to seven years to complete that plan. And if you have any questions on the certificates or the program, and hopefully we'll have some time that we can do a little breakout and, and talk more specifically about the programs that you're most interested in. So Dr. Christine Oker could not be here with us this evening, but we have one of our current students who can answer questions about both certificate and life as a student in general, one of our very best students. So, Chang Wan, go ahead. Thank you. Hey, I'm Chang Wan Kim and Dr. Sin in the Education Policy Evaluation Program. And I'm currently working as a graduate assistant for the program evaluation and IR certificate. So, the IR certificate program is the credit that will acknowledge your skills and knowledge regarding institutional research and it is designed for the current researchers, administrators, and graduate students who are interested in working in institutional research or higher education. So both degree and non-degree students can apply for this certificate program and specifically IR certificate groups focus on higher education assessment or evaluation and institutional research. So all students who want to get the IR certificate must take three part in two elective courses that students can earn this certificate fully online. At least they choose to take some math course class as part of their degree program. Also, students will take practical courses under supervision of the director of this program, Dr. Christian McClure. We, we are offering three required courses and two elective courses. And you can choose two elective courses that may fit your interest among the all other elective courses. And the other courses are offering our IRS web page. These are potential professions in institutional research and average professional salary information from a survey conducted in 2018 or 19 for more than for more than 10,000 institutions. And, and it reflects aggregate salary information from 51K to 96K, depending on the professions. So our graduates from the certificate program have continued in their successful positions, such as vice president for research and policy at NASPA, or director of IR at the University of South Alabama. If you are not a current FSA student, you should apply to the university as degree seeking or non degree seeking students first. Then all students must apply to the certificate program. Once you're enrolled, you can have up to seven years to complete all the coursework. And also, I'd like to mention that students have to submit the certificate admission form before the two courses that you may want to count for the certificate. So, if you have any questions about the program certificate evaluation or IR certificate, I'm here to help you. So, please feel free to reach out after I follow up, after Mokor, or me, or please give our certificate web page. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Eric Ludwig. I am the director of the online EDD program here at FSU and uh, at Leadership and Policy. Um, so as Dr. Park Gagan said at the beginning, at the outset, um, we have these sort of three areas um, across the department, um, ed, ed leadership, um, 
ed policy and evaluation and then higher ed. And our EDD program actually cuts across all of these areas. Um, and we have students from um, who are higher ed practitioners and K-12 practi practitioner um, in our program. So uh, the EDD program is a uh, terminal doctoral degree uh, that is designed to be completed in three years. Uh, and the coursework is all offered um, exclusively online and asynchronously. Uh, all of our students, we have about 115 doctoral students um, in the program um, who are majority of them in the state of Florida, but we have students um, uh, across the United States and um, a handful of students outside of the United States. Uh, they're all practitioners of some sort in, in educational settings. Uh, so we have veteran classroom teachers through um, building assistant principals, principals uh, who are working in uh, county or district offices uh, as directors of curriculum and instruction or assistant uh, superintendents. In higher ed, we have students who are the veteran faculty at two-year community colleges or um, regional public universities um, through deans and directors and assistant vice presidents. Uh, so really a quite a diverse pool of, of students who are working in a variety of um, uh, professional settings as educational practitioners. Um, as I mentioned, the, the degree is designed to be completed in three years. Uh, and culminates with a, um, a dissertation in practice, uh, which a four chapter dissertation in which you conduct applied research designed to, uh, to address uh, or explore a problem um, of what we call a problem of practice, right? A problem that you encounter in the context uh, in which you work or as a practitioner. Um, the, uh, the program is a, uh, is a cohort model. So uh, similar to, to EDA, as Dr. Forehand said, um, we have uh, between five to 40 students each year who uh, start in, during the summer term um, and they complete uh, their curriculum um, as a cohort uh, with the majority of the coursework completed in the first two years and then the final year devoted to um, finishing their dissertation in practice. Um, one other note here is that we also um, we have a three-day summer institute here in Tallahassee uh, where our EDD students from across the state and across the country come and join us. And it's a sort of a pro professional uh, learning community, you might want to call it, but it's an opportunity for us to meet and socialize and connect with each other and build relationships. Uh, and this coming year, that will be June 20th to the 22nd here in Tallahassee. Um, as I mentioned, we have a, a May start, um, so a summer term start. And the application deadline is actually uh, February 1st, not January 15th. Um, so we have an extended uh, deadline um, of February 1st. Um, so as, as part of that application, um, similar to other applications you've heard about, we have a statement of purpose in which we kind of want to hear a little bit more about you, your aspirations to be, to be a doctoral student, what's sort of drawing you to this program, to hear a little bit more about your interests, your potential research interests, a problem that you see in your work as an educational practitioner, and how you might think about uh, approaching that problem uh, as a scholar practitioner, uh, sort of empirically. Um, three letters of recommendation, a copy of your resume or CV, uh, first or transcripts, a graduate degree um, with at least a GPA of 3.5, uh, and then um, the GRE, we do have a GRE requirement, but that GRE can potentially be waived under um, certain uh, waiver requests or possibilities. So the first is a, a graduate degree, at least 3.75, uh, or uh, evidence of 10 years of professional experience, um, which includes uh, an additional statement if you're applying for the waiver under that criterion. So uh, the program itself, um, again, the coursework is delivered asynchronously, um, meaning that there are no sort of live requirements, um, although there is supplemental instruction that's offered, offer, often offered virtually. Uh, 45 hours of required coursework that is completed, as I mentioned, uh, over the course of primarily two years. And uh, you take six credits in each term with the exception of two terms. 
Uh, and then you have 24 hours of dissertation credit, which are um, in the final year as you are collecting data, or you're in the field collecting data, analyzing data, and writing up the results of your um, of your study. <clears throat> um, in in this program, sort of we draw from a lot of the uh, curricular and um, policy foundations that are can be found in other programs uh, in ELPS. So uh, there is a focus on um, educational foundations and policy. Um, you also take a suite of uh, methodology courses, um, as well as what we call intensive academic immersion experiences. But these are really um, courses in which you're working on building and revising and, and um, developing your dissertation in practice. Uh, the dissertation in practice itself, uh, as I mentioned, is the culminating project of the EDD program. Uh, and it consists of uh, empirical research, right, uh, aimed at addressing a problem that you see uh, in your local context as a practitioner. Um, and, and a lot of that dissertation writing is actually embedded in coursework during your first two years. Um, as part of that dissertation, you had a dissertation advisor as well as a, um, is a dissertation committee that will sort of um, advise you in your, um, uh, throughout the development of that project. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can uh, email myself directly uh, or uh, Ms. Debham Kelly. Um, I meet with prospective students quite regularly to talk through their interests and their ideas and whether this program is, is a fit for them or not, um, and uh, more than willing to do that with you.